way Charleston County School Board members will be elected in the future to the latest on Stony Field. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with former District 20 Constituent School Board Chairman Tony Lewis for this edition of Quintens Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quintens Close-Ups on Facebook. Tony E. Lewis, <laughs> welcome back to Quintens Close-Ups. It's always a pleasure, brother. I appreciate it greatly. When I grace your presence, Mr. Quentin Washington. Thank you very much. Sir, thank I, you very I respect you whole, wholeheartedly, my friend. Oh, thank you very much. And more so than others. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that all the time. Yeah, that's a different story for yes, another day, folks. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we have a small camera here, so I can't really social distance, and I'm right, waiting on my true, yeah, true. yeah, stuff like true. that. And I choose not to wear. But well, I got a mask on too. That's, that's, that's something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but obviously, seriously, I want to bring you back on Quentin's close ups because you just texted me yesterday. Yes, sir. And you told me that you want to talk to me more in depth about obviously the governor signing a bill into mm -hmm. law that changes how the Charleston County School Board members get elected. And this is from Rob Way, a reporter at Live by mm -hmm. News. It reads this. Governor Henry Goodmaster has signed a bill into law that completely changes how Charleston County School Board members get elected. Mm -hmm. When you heard the bill was got, got signed into law, Tony, where did your mind go first? Well, my mind was uh, ecstatic, elated, because folks been getting put on these boards from different districts, not in their own district, but other districts when putting these people on the board and it was hurting kids, our scholars and students of uh, African American and, and brown and black and brown kids, scholars and students because their visions and idea were not where, where I was need to carry our scholars and students in the right direction. What should that vision look like now? Well, the vision should be beautiful because now you have to be getting your votes coming out your district there's no more uh, signatures or none of that. So if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, out the door you need to go. As a and, and let me add to this, sir. If you ain't doing what our scholars, our parents, our students, community need you to do, you need to go out the door. Bottom line. What should they do now as far as the Charleston County School District and the school board? No, well, they need to get the act together. Because uh this is trying times. As a matter of fact, uh, on my way here, y'all was just speaking my spirit, saying to me, uh, you know, uh, all all our kids, uh, all our scholars and students asking for is a fair opportunity, a fair educational opportunity, meaning uh, give them this. Don't look at their zip code when where, where they're at. Look for what they can do, give them the opportunity as other kids, scholars, as their white counterparts, scholars and students. Where does the discussion between equity and equality comes in when it comes to education? Well, it, it starts with the board members have to see a vision that want to carry all the scholars and students in the right direction. Many African Americans, because they'll be sh getting shot for uh, in many anyways. Uh, I like to see more African American history implemented, like folks say history, but I'm talking about his story, not history but his story, okay? Because I like to see African-American stories be put in these books because, again, a lot of things, they tell uh, history, oh, a lot of African-Americans did great things, men and women, but they were deprived of the opportunity to be put in the history books. The history books, not his story, but history books. What is the history of the Charleston County School Board in your mind? The history of mine is, is not in the right direction. They're not going in the right direction. And, you have a leader there now who uh, I don't feel like giving the African American scholars and students a fair opportunity because there's things implemented, is implemented against them, not for them. Here you taking a lot of African American strongholds like principals and stuff, and you got them working. And prime example, Nick Nelson was at Simmons Pinckney. I, I, I got them to hire Nate Nelson after Burke High School, at Burke High School graduation. And Nate was a great fit for that school. Nate uh, took his scholars and students to the right direction, but Nate didn't have the Nate didn't have the support coming from the district superintendent, of the district, neither his staff, uh, to finish carrying what he had his vision to take all scholars and students in the right direction. Okay, what support do they, does this uh, Simmons Pickney Elementary School staff need now? 
Well, they need a strong leader who will replace Nate, or oh, not replace him, but kind of pull him, carry the, pick up the torch and carry it on from what Nate carried at. Nate Nelson, he did a great job. Uh, but they have, they need, they have a lot of issues with some of the scholars, uh, attitude, uh, uh, academic um, shortfall and all kind of things. So uh, Nick was doing a great job, as I say again. And Nick just wanted some support. And Postal went and give Nick the support. So Nick left. And you can't blame him. And then he had his, he had his own folks who been a staff and going on his back. And parents been help going, collaborating with the staff and, and getting Dr. Postal with them ears uh, about Mr. Nelson. You talk about the academic shortfall. What exactly is that at Simmons Pinckney? Well, the academic shortfall is that they're not giving the scholars and students what they need to go forward. You got some of them that have learned, learning disabilities. There are opportunities and things that can put them back on the right course where they need to be by having the right teachers and the right staff in there who care about them, not crying about a pocket book. Uh, uh, because it comes to my attention, they got a lot of pocketbook teachers out here. Just coming there to get the, 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 the money and out the door. You got a lot of them come to pay their loans off, they grant their loans off, student loans, and go with the business. They're not there in the, for the scholars and the students. Okay? And I've seen person firsthand because I was on the school board for 14 years right. and I've seen it. And my thing about it, when I was trying to stay focused and make sure the scholars and students get the right fit, meaning the principal or this, this, all the, all the things they need to go forward with, then I was cut down because I was not folks puppet, as they say, because you know the powers that be have a lot of puppets out here, bought puppets, and they couldn't bought me, so, because they came back to when Toya Green left the board and I applied for the board, and I was going to be in there, but the lie was concocted from the district, Nancy McGinley, the district, and, and, the, and the election commission. Because when I went there and applied, I went to Mr. Edward Jones and turned the paperwork in way before time. Right. And when I got there, they sit in front of the election commission. Oh, he didn't turn the paper in time. It was a lie. I know it was a bunch of conspiracy. But they brought Todd Garrett in there, and he didn't do nothing. He never came. None of those African-American schools, that's a, something for him. The grandstand on, and he called. He come around. And go, oh, I'm in it for the kids. No, you weren't, bro. You wasn't in for the kids because you never came in none of those African American schools and visit and ask them what they needed to help them get what they needed. Being you their board member and you represent that district. Okay, Mr. Louis fought tooth and nail. Mr. Louis fought the district. Mr. Louis fought the city, county hall, the county, Charleston city, and all. And guess what? Thank God again. Stony Field, prime example. Thanks, Coach Mario Drayton, Coach James Jameson, and Coach Oscar Fordham that petitioned me and challenged me to come in front of the board and now go look at Stony Field now. Thank God for those guys. And all due respect, Mr. Miller said to me, all oh, you was not coming. I went in front of the board and now you see the results. Go back there now and look at the results from being strong. When you stand up for what you believe in and don't let nobody turn you around and you got the power of, of the Yahweh and God, you're never going to fail. You're always going to be successful. And I hope you get Todd Garrett's side of the story when I interview him for Quentin School stuff later this Oh, summer. yes, you need to. And ask him why you never been in none of those schools. I bet you, I bet you they can tell you how much time you've been over there in Wando and those other schools. I promise you that. And I know you've been over there in Wando. Especially now, I know his name after his aunt. I know he's going to be over there till his term up. But it's so sad because he didn't want to. He didn't want to run last last year going last term because somebody told me a bunch of my lawyer friends told me so he didn't want to run. But guess what? They pushed him up. His wife didn't even want him to run, but they pushed him up to run again to keep me out of there because they didn't want a strong voice and they didn't want a strong role because they knew I represented a district where there were African-American scholars and students mainly at. And I want the best for them. Because again, these are our, today's up, upcoming leaders. Okay, instead of having problems in the street, we need to have 
All I do is envision to keep them to the right direction, my friend. And now my story about the whole, well, not my story, but the story about what the governor signed in the bill has been done out of the, out of the window right now. That's right. But let me, let me capitalize on a couple of things that you just said. You said earlier the powers of be that kept you from obviously being on the Philip mm -hmm. Charleston County School Board. Who were they? Dr. Nancy McGinley, our election commission, and others, okay? And others. And if I had folks look like me, they didn't want me there because the, the voice was too strong. And because Dr. McGinley and, uh, and, and John Emerson called me back in 2000, I think it was 2008, if my memory served me well. 2008 or somewhere, somewhere around there, if my memory served me. 2008, 12 or somewhere. But anyway, uh, they asked me, they said, uh, we want, what I was, i go back to this. I was sitting by Brook Bank Park having lunch and the phone rang. Judy called me. Judy said, Mr. Lewis, Dr. McGinley would like to have a meeting with you uh, at 4.30. Can you make it? I said, sure. I said, furthermore, what do I want to call this meeting? Oh, well, Dr. McGinley wants to meet with you. So I went and I met with her and um, John Emerson. And uh, John and her sent me and I said, now, what I told him, I said, what do I want to call this meeting? So they said, well, we want to hear what you got to say. We want to know what, what your views are. They want to be on the school board and you can do uh, uh, what, what Needed to be done on what you going to do with me, ask you to... No, I said, I let him all talk. And then I said, now, let me tell you something. Me, I'm not your go along, get along nigga. Because you got niggas mess things up with black folks. And when you all in that, when they mess things up, they throw back to us. See, so I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to be nobody's puppet. Nobody can't buy me. And I told them the same thing. You can't buy me because I'm not for sale. Especially on the backs of my, on the backs of people, but mainly the ones look like me. I'm not gonna sell them out because I can't look them in their face, knowing I'd sell them out. And think, that's why you, know, you look and see, my friend. A lot of things have never changed for us because we got too much sellouts. They're coming to make us think they fight for us, but behind closed doors, getting duffel back. Okay, behind closed doors, getting duffel back. So again, that's why nothing changed. But look and see how many years I've been on this bill for 59 years. 59 nights can tell how many things changed. Was I said I've been a youth to a grown man, and nothing changed because we got the same old as cheap little say prime suspects want to speak up for us. Nobody speaks for me. I don't need nobody speak for me. All I ask is my God to bring the words out my mouth, and He want people to to hear. See. As he's gonna benefit. He's gonna be glorified, and his people gonna benefit from what I say come out of my mouth. Nobody speaks for me. And lastly, Tony, I know because I have to wrap this up. I gotta yes, sir. go put another interview yes, up. Sir. <laughs> but uh, you talked earlier about the opportunities for African Americans that the school board are allegedly against. What opportunities that the, are the Charleston County School District are for when it comes to African Americans? Well, I, I, I really don't see none. I really don't because as again. If it was any, you could see the change of dynamics and things change, but it's not. It's not. They don't have good ideas and vision for African American scholars and students. You know, just like I said about, about Mr. Nate Nelson. Nate Nelson did a great job for what he had directly. And a prime example, a bunch of his scholars and students graduated. This student gone. I watched him. And matter of fact, I thank God. I thank Yahweh. Thank God because. I helped a bunch of them graduate because a lot of them was going down the street, out the door, because they got they did something and, it, and me and Mr. Nelson and, and his principal, assistant principal worked it out and those kids, those scholars been put back in there. Now, I'm, I looked at a bunch of them graduate this June going. And it made me feel so good because, it, and, and I know it was God because every time I would come up that street, something street got to send me up something street and I wonder, why are you going up some street every time? And every time I run into a scholar, a student, boy, a girl, and I take them back to school now, they, they're graduates now. It makes me feel good. Now, how do you hope to get those people who graduated from Simmons Pinckney to graduate from Burke High School? Well, we, we, I think, well, we have to work close with the, uh, uh, the principal who's there uh, uh, to show her that it is very pertinent that she works well with the scholars or students and the parents and the staff and the community, everybody working together as a team. Because if we're working as a team, then the scholars and the students have to jump on board. It's like a success train. 
you got a ticket, okay? But the only way you can get that ticket, you gotta be, you wanna be academic inclined and be successful to get on that train. And that, that train consists of principal, staff, parents, community, board members, and then lastly, the scholar and the students. And you talked earlier about the students. Uh, obviously, we are in, a, in the midst of a coronavirus outbreak mm -hmm. as we are sitting mm -hmm. here right now. And most of the schools, districts are really uh, coordinating a plan mm -hmm. to bring school students back in the fold. Mm -hmm. How do you hope that African-American students particularly don't get left behind? Well, we have to stay focused and myself and others who really wants to truly uh, be a part of this thing, making sure these scholars and students of, of African-American race be included in the plan, not discluded, okay? Meaning that they have the proper things they need to equip themselves so when they go in front, of, go in these schools, they'll be there and equipped with it. Not only equipped, but, but educate them to the fact, hey, you need this. Not only this, you, put, you, you can put a video together and show them how pertinent there is for them to wear a mask. Educate them first and foremost before you put a mask in their hand. See them once they see the education to the back of folks dying if you don't have the proper um, materials to combat what's going on there, then you know that, okay, I got to put this mask on. I got to keep this mask on because it's going to save my little life. See? And you talked earlier about Stony Field. What's the latest? Well, I, I, I looked at Stony Field. Um, I see the, thank God, uh, yeah, thank y'all and thank God again. I see the press boxes being fixed now. Uh, the grass is growing nice. Uh, the stadium is painted. So I think it's a great thing because, again, we have to stay up on top of folks. We don't, we're not begging for nothing. We're not, and I'm not, I don't beg, I don't plead, I don't ask, I demand. Because I demand is like anybody, I demand like my white brothers and sisters, counterparts. And they get what they want. So I feel, we, and, we, and furthermore, we are taxpayers. We are taxpayers, so we shouldn't have to beg nobody for nothing. Because if we don't pay the taxes, and the parents don't pay no taxes, guess what? There won't be no school board, there won't be nothing. Okay? So you are a taxpayer, so you can demand what you want. Because it's your tax dollars. Okay? Tony E. Lewis, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quintus Wilson. Always good to see you, my friend. Likewise.